Hello, students. This is example number three. We're going to cover a three-layered soil. So we're going to improve on examples one and two. We are going to include the effects of water. And we're also going to have an extra layer of soil of some sort. To get a better view of what this example number three looks like, please refer to your course notes, lecture six. All right, fantastic. Let's recall some of the formulas. We are going to start by calculating the vertical stress. That is the stress caused by the soil only. We're not going to consider water. The formula for it, right here. The vertical stress is the density of the soil times the depth of that soil. More of this is in the lecture posted for you. Next, we're going to calculate the pore water pressure, that is the buoyancy of water, which is calculated by the density of water times the depth of water above. Finally, we're going to calculate the effective stress, which is the whole point of this series of lectures, which is the difference between the vertical stress and the pore water pressure. So let's go ahead. Let's see if we can calculate what the effective stress is at each location of interface as well as the bottom of the borehole. Let's get started. First, we will start with the vertical stress. So I'm going to draw a somewhat straight line. I'm going to call this my vertical stress sigma v. And my units are in pounds per square feet. Okay, we're going to start at the top. What is going to be the stress at the very top here? It's the density of this soil times the depth of the soil. Well, there is no soil above there, right? So the calculation is actually zero for the density, because there is no soil above, times the depth of zero, because there is no depth of soil above. The value here is zero. Let's move down to the next interface. What is going to be the vertical stress right here. We're going to apply again this formula. The density of the soil above is 115 pounds per cubic feet. And the depth of the soil above is going to be 10 feet. That means that the vertical stress here is going to be 1,150 pounds per square feet. Let's move on to the next interface right here. What is going to be the vertical stress right at this location? Well, we start by adding the stress above, because we're only going to be calculating this with this formula. So we have to add the vertical stress above. 1,150 pounds per square feet Plus, we're going to use this formula. So for this portion of soil, the density is 125 pounds per cubic feet. And what is the depth of the soil for this density? You got it, 30 feet, right? It's a difference between 40 feet and 10 feet. This value comes out to be 4,900 pounds per square feet, which is what this guy would be, 4,900. And please note that in a moment I'll be actually erasing these calculations just for conservation of space. Okay, let's move on to the bottom of the borehole. What is going to be the vertical stress at this location at the bottom of the borehole? Well, we start by adding everything above this chunk of soil, which is 4,900 plus, and then we employ this formula. It's density times depth. Density is 120 pounds per cubic feet, and the depth is 10 feet. Right? This is the depth of soil. From here to here, 10 feet. This number is 6,100 
pounds per square feet. Now I'm going to erase the calculations just to make it a bit neater. The beauty of the video is that you can pause, rewind, and go back to see how they were, these numbers were obtained. So now that we have these values of stresses, how do we connect them? What kind of line do we use? A straight line. So now we have the stress distribution, the vertical stress distribution from the top of the borehole to the bottom of the borehole. Let's now move on to the pore water pressure. That is the buoyancy force caused by water. I'm going to draw another straight line down here. I'm going to call this pore water pressure. which is going to be U in pounds per square feet. As we saw in example two, until we hit water, there is zero pore water pressure, right? So for this portion here, there is no water pressure because there is no water in this soil. So at both this location and this location, we have zero. If you're not sure how I got those zeros, refer to example number two. Okay, now let's move on to this interface, right? We have water now below here. We have to take it into account that this interface and this interface. We have to use this formula. And don't forget what the density of water is in, in imperial units. 62.4 pounds per cubic feet in your lecture notes and example number two. All right, so let's go here. The pore water pressure at this location is... 62.4 pounds per cubic feet times the depth of water, which is 30 feet. And to it, I'm going to add zero, which is the pore water pressure above, equals to 1,872, which is what this is going to be. 1,872. Okay, let's calculate the pore water pressure here. We're going to use the same formula, and we're going to calculate it for a depth of 10 feet. Okay, so we're going to start by adding the pore water pressure above, because we're only calculating for this, so we have to add the one above. 1,872 pounds per square feet, plus, by using this formula, 62.4 pounds per cubic feet times a depth of 10 feet, which gives us 2,496 pounds per square feet, which is what this number is, 2,496. Now, in the interest of neatness, I'm going to erase these calculations. Uh, you can rewind and pause to review them. How do we collect, connect these points? Well, if you've done everything to scale, because we're just looking at one element throughout water, this should be a straight line from here to here. And I don't just mean that this is a straight line and this is another straight line. It's the same straight line with the same slope because we're using the same density throughout. Here it's different densities, different slopes. But here it's the same slope. So if you're doing this to scale, this should come out to be a straight line and the same slope because it's the same material, water throughout. Okay, let's move on to the final portion of this example, calculating the effective stress. This is the effective stress, sigma prime in pounds per square feet. And as I measured in example number two, this is the easier one of all of these to calculate because if you have this and you have this, this is simply vertical minus pore pressure. Let's do it. At the very top, 
the value of effective stress is 0 minus 0 gives us 0. The next interface, it is 1150 minus 0, which gives us 1150 pounds per square feet. Let's move on to the next one. 4,900 minus 1,872 gives us 3,028 pounds per square feet. Finally, the very bottom, 6,100 minus 2,496 gives us 3,604. And how do we connect each one of these points? With a straight line. There are going to be different slopes. But here is the stress distribution for multiple layers of soils where water appears somewhere below the surface.